Hi, praise the Lord. God bless you. My name is Bishop Bob Jackson. I'm the pastor of Axeville Gospel Church, and I want to welcome you to the Axeville Gospel Church broadcast. Don't you touch that dial because I believe God has a word for you today. And listen, I'm telling you, God is blessing his people like never before, but we've got to get into the word of God. So get your Bibles. Come on, get your Bibles, get your family, call your friends and tell them, listen, Axeville Gospel Church is on the air and we want to make sure we get everything that God is saying to us on today. Through the storm, God has delivered you. He's done what no one else could do. Time after time, he's made a way for you. You abundantly Still you sit in church so quietly But how can you sit there with nothing to say Well you know the Lord has made a way Oh my Lord Can I get a witness? Oh my Lord Will you be a witness? Oh my Lord Oh will you be a witness? Oh my Lord Won't you the witness Oh my Lord A sanctified witness Oh my Lord A true church family and friends. Today is a special day, not just because we can celebrate and praise the Lord into a brand new year, but also because this is the birthday of Bishop Jackson. So we want to celebrate him even though we are virtual. Go ahead and type in the comments, happy birthday Bishop, send him your love so that he can see all of the comments coming from everywhere. And we want to celebrate him with a new song. It's still happy birthday. But go ahead and join in with me as we sing happy birthday to our own Bishop Jackson. Happy birthday. service. We thank God for being able to come to you tonight. We thank God for all that he's doing and all that he's done. We are so excited about the things that God is getting ready to do. We appreciate you. We love you and thank God for you. And right now we're getting ready to open up with a word of prayer. Can we all say Lord Jesus? Come on, can we say it again? Lord Jesus, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank and praise you as we give you glory and as we give you honor for this day, Lord. We love you and appreciate you, God, because you had the plan for our life. You had a wonderful plan for our life that you would give your one and only son to give his life so that we could live, Lord. He shed his innocent blood, washed away our sins. Every stripe on his back was for us to be healed. And now, God, we thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus, as we we lift you up as we extol your name on high. You did it all for us. You made a way out of no way. And we yet thank you. We yet praise you. Thank you for all that you've done this year. How you covered us with your love. How you put a hedge of protection around us. Oh God, how you lifted us up. No matter what went on in this world, God, you kept us safe, Lord Jesus. And we thank you and we praise you, God. And we give you glory right now as we embark upon a whole new year. Lord Jesus, we, we will continue to praise you. We will 
will continue to serve you. We thank God for our own bishop, Bishop Bob Jackson, who preaches the word of God. We thank God that he teaches the line upon line, precept upon precept, opening up the eyes of our understanding. God, we thank you for Lady Barbara, his wife, Lord Jesus. We thank you for all that they do for this ministry, Lord, and all the pastors and ministers and elders and deacons and all missionaries and evangelists, all of them that make this ministry what it is. God, we thank you tonight, and we give you glory, and we give you honor. Lord Jesus, as we come out of this year, Lord God, we coming out of this year into a brand new year. If you delay your coming in, God, we lift up a standard of holiness like never before. We will lift your name on high. Oh, God, and we thank you and we praise you for making a way, Lord Jesus. We thank and praise you for all that you're getting ready to do, Lord. We thank you that we are truly soldiers in your army, Lord, and our minds are made up that we will serve you, asking that you bless the ones that are watching tonight, that you encourage their hearts, oh, God, through this service, that they will be encouraged, Lord, to go on with you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for each and every one of them, and let your glory fill their home, Lord Jesus. Let your glory fill their homes, Lord Jesus, as we give you glory and as we give you honor, because this is the day that you have made, God, and we are yet rejoicing, and we're glad in it. We're thankful for who you are, thankful that we serve Almighty God, and now, Lord Jesus, we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we cease not to give thanks for Acts for Gospel Church, making mention of Acts in our prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of, of your calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him on his own right hand in heavenly places. Oh God, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We thank you for our perfect peace. We thank you for the eyes of our understanding being enlightened by you, Lord Jesus as we give you glory, as we give you honor in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, God. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, we're Thank offering sacrifices of praise. Hallelujah. It's a sacrifice because sometimes you don't feel like it. Hallelujah. Even though you know that he's worthy, that he's deserving, sometimes you're tired, you don't feel like it, but it's a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands this morning. Let's lift up our voices Hallelujah. this morning. Let's give him all that he deserves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. I call you holy, your name is holy, you are so holy to me. I call you holy, your name is holy, holy you are and holy you be. Hallelujah, hallelujah Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. I call you holy, I call you holy. Your name is holy, you are so holy, you are so holy to me. I call you holy, I call you holy. Your name Your is holy, name is holy. holy you are holy, you are holy, holy, holy. Yes. 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 yes, 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 I call you holy, I call you holy. Your name Your is holy. Name is holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Your name is holy. Holy you 
in the house got saved. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I seen you guys walking up and down the street. You had the, the Jesus, Jesus is God, Jesus loves shirts. And that, that caught my attention, and what, what you guys are doing is great, man. I haven't got prayed for or prayed with in a long time. And that right there, during the holiday season, it meant a lot. It meant a lot. And by, and by you guys going around in the community doing that, it's great. It says a lot, and it brings Jesus into the community. When you guys are doing that, praying with people, and just your presence is a, is a lot. It means a lot. It meant a lot to me, and I know it means a lot to everybody else. That's why I said you guys keep doing what you're doing. It's great. And you guys are the real soldiers. You guys are the real soldiers out doing his, spreading his word, doing his thing, God's thing, and, and I thank you guys.
have a pin and pin straight by today.
Hi, Bishop Bob Jackson from Maxwell Gospel Church. Listen, I want to let you know something. Listen, there's so many people that are in fear, that are walking around, afraid of just about everything. Afraid of corona, afraid of the, the gun violence, afraid of the robbing, the stealing, and all that you see, the chaos that's going on in the world today. Let me tell you something. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but he did give us a spirit. He gave us his Holy Spirit, which is love. Huh? Come on. He said, he's given us the spirit of love and power, amen, and peace. Come on. And the fruits of the spirit, amen, goodness and mercy and love and faith and all of these things we're supposed to have. But he did not give us a spirit of fear. So if you're suffering in fear, I need to let you know today, that's not of God. Cast that spirit out in the name of Jesus and give him the praise and give him the glory. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Bishop. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Bishop. We love you. You may be seated if you can. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. I want to ask, I saw Kinsley. Kinsley, where'd you go? Kinsley? Kinsley. Psh, come up here, buddy. Kinsley, come here. No, he's not nervous. Don't say that. He's not nervous. Kinsley, come here. Come here. Kinsley, Kinsley come here. Come on, give him a hand clap. Give him a hand clap. This is... Kinsley, you, gave, you sang a song for Brother Demetrius' home going the other day. Do you remember that song? Can you sing it again for us? Would you mind? You ain't nervous in the name of Jesus. No, you're not. As soon as you start singing, you'll be okay. You want to try it? Come on, Bishop. Go. I'm going to stand. Come on, Kinsley. Isn't that going to cheer? You don't want them to? You want them to? Okay. He said he doesn't want you to cheer because you make him nervous when you cheer. Take your mask off. There is a name that is so precious, a name so wonderful to me. me. This name is worthy of all praises. Because of him, I am made free. That name is Jesus. Oh, how I love him. The one who gave his life for me. Because of love, so unconditional, I will have life eternally. This name speaks peace unto my storm clouds. This name speaks calm unto my fear. And when I think that no one loves me, his loving presence is so near. That name is Jesus. Oh, how I love him, the one who gave his life for me. I will have life eternally. Praise that name. Praise that name. Praise that name. Praise that name. 
about community. It is really, really great to have back as my guest, the pastor of Acts Full Gospel Church, Bishop Bob Jackson. My name is Robert L. Harris, and I am your host of All About Community. So, uh, Pastor Jackson, yes, sir. welcome. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I Thank know you. you're just enjoying yourself, having a good time with nothing to do, just... <laughs> no. uh, you know, it's just, it's just been great. But the truth is, there's a lot been going on here in Oakland. Is that right? Absolutely, sir. Now let's uh, start with the OK program. Sure. What's going on with the OK? OK means our kids, our kids program. Our kids program, we have 344 boys on their way to graduation for the Oakland Unified School District, uh, from middle school to high school. And, uh, and we're, we're really proud of those boys. They're doing an exceptional job, and uh, we're looking forward to them graduating and being the great men that God intended for them to be. What are some of the components of uh, the OK program? How does it work, and why is it so important? OK, great question. First of all, Depp Norcross, uh, Donald Northcross, is the founder of the program. He was a deputy sheriff in Sacramento County, and he got tired of locking up black boys because the majority of the boys he was locking up were black. And so he got tired of locking up black boys. He's a Christian. He prayed and asked the Lord, what could he do about that? And the Lord gave him the concept, gave him the vision about the OK program. The OK program invo involves police officers working not as police officers to lock up the boys, but to work with them as mentors, work with them as, as counselors, work with them at ones who could teach them leadership and help them to navigate through the inner city, through what we call the ghetto, okay, and become successful in the process. So these 
officers are black also. So they're chosen black officers working with black boys. And then we have a mentorship uh, program with men, black men coming on board to mentor our boys, providing role models for them and working with them with tutoring and working with them on, on everyday problems that they may be having. Surrogate fathers, if you please, I mean, they're in the boys' lives. And these officers go to the schools, they're in the classrooms, they're walking the halls, they're dealing with the boys morning, noon, and night. And the boys have their cell phone number. So they can call them at any time if they have a problem or whatnot. They make sure that they get to school, make sure they get on time, there on time, working with the teachers, make sure they get good grades, making sure their attitudes and their uh, you know, uh, behavior is conducive to you know, getting good grades in school. And I understand that uh, many of the men are from the 100 black men of the Bay Area, is that I correct? Was, I was gonna say that. The 100 black men of the Bay Area have have joined the OK program to provide the mentorship training for our boys. And the majority of them are college graduates and many of them are business owners. So the boys are firsthand, uh, you know, up, uh, inter interacting with these great successful black men. Well, a lot of them have had to negotiate through the same obstacles that these boys are facing in the inner city. And also with the Oakland Unified School District. And uh, <clears throat> the, the 100 black men uh, spend uh, their time voluntarily, is that correct? Absolutely. Everybody's volunteer except the police officers. <laughs> <laughs> and they get paid. <laughs> so so the, the, problem, the hiccup that we had, though, was lately, since the George Floyd incident, it's, it's now unpopular, you know, to have police officers at school. So they Unpopular with whom? With, Not everybody. Well, it, with people that are putting pressure on the powers to be to make sure that we don't have any police officers in the schools at all. So doing that was fine with what they had, but to remove our program from the school. And that's what the school initially did, is that correct? That's exactly what they did. And they gave us no time. They said, you get out, you got police officers, get out of here, don't have any more. I said, wait, 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 hold And I know you didn't just walk out, you, you did something. Did now tell me what you, what did you do? I did the what did you do? see was stop on their <laughs> desk. I'm telling you, let them know, listen, these folks don't even live in Oakland and they come down telling us what's best for our community. You know what I'm saying? So we had to go down to the Oakland school board on a Wednesday to meet with the whole board with all of the parents. So you mobilized the, the whole community. We mobilized about 350 people went down there on Wednesday. And I'm telling you, we stood up for the OK program and said, listen, even though it's involving police officers, these are black police officers working with black boys, with black men to keep our boys out of crime and out of the jails and in school and getting their diplomas and being the great men God intended them to be. And I understand that the juvenile hall was built uh, recently for, I guess maybe 10 or 12 years ago, for about 350 or 500 no, boys. it was, was actually built for 500 boys. 500 boys, boys and, yeah. and, 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 and the OK program reduced that number down to about 60, is that true? Down to 56, actually. 56, 56. Now, somebody had exactly. to be mad about that. Well, they were, because the, the JIOs, the juvenile institutional officers, were complaining they wanted more boys up there, more kids up there, because their, their job was in jeopardy, you see? So I'm saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. These boys don't need to be here, you know what I'm saying? And they're not gonna be here, because this program is gonna make sure that they don't. Well, that uh, seems to me that the sole purpose of the OK program is to ensure that our children do not get in trouble and that they grow up to be productive citizens. We're going to have to take a break, so don't touch that remote. As a matter of fact, just put it down. We will be right back with All About Community. My name is Robert L. Harris. I am your host, and my guest is Bishop Bob Jackson. Axful Gospel Church. We'll be right back. Let's just praise our God. If you don't want to praise Him for yourself, praise Him for your neighbor because you never know what they're going through. Let's stand on our feet and let's worship our God. Praise high, hallelujah. Yes, God, yes, God. We magnify your name, Jesus. 
great power, exceedingly great power, exceedingly great power. We love your power. We love your power, Lord. Give us the power. Give us the power. Give us the power. We need your power. We love your power. Praise the Lord, saints. This is Elder Joseph Cotton from Maxwell Gospel Church, where Jesus Christ is Lord. I pray that you are being blessed with our service, doing our praise, our worship. Hallelujah. We just give God all the praise and the glory. We've made it through another year. Hallelujah. We know that a lot of people are sick. A lot of people are still shut in and dealing with the coronavirus. But we know that God is able. Hallelujah. We know he's able Hallelujah to deliver us out. And we're expecting great things in the year 2022. But I want to give you an opportunity to give one more time in the year 2021. Amen. Because we want you to be blessed and we want the windows of heaven to be open in your life. So we want to give you that opportunity. Amen. So if you can get your Bible and turn with me to Luke 6 verse 37. Luke 6 verse 37. Hallelujah. How, don't, how, how, how many really know that the Lord Jesus Christ wants you to be blessed? Amen. He really wants you to be blessed. Matter of fact, he want to bless you more than you want to be blessed. But you got to be obedient to the word of God. If you don't be obedient to the word of God, you cannot get, you cannot receive what the word of God says you are supposed to have. Obedience is the key to unlocking the blessings in your life. In Luke 6, verse 37 says, Judge not, and you shall not be judged. We have a lot of people judging people. Amen. Judging folks with what, what kind of clothes they have on. They're not even in the church good, and you're judging them already. Let them, let the Lord deal with them. Amen. If they ain't dressed right, let the Lord deal with them. You be quiet and stop judging. Amen. Because with you judging, somebody going to judge you. Hallelujah. He's saying, if you condemn somebody, guess what? You're going to be condemned. Hallelujah. And then he said, and you shall not be condemned. And then he said, forgive, and you shall be forgiven. We have a lot of people that want to be forgiven, but they don't want to forgive nobody. But you got to forgive for you to be forgiven. Amen. This is called the law of or reciprocity. Amen. Whatever a man sow of that shall he also reap. Watch this and then verse 38. This is the Lord Jesus Christ talking. If your Bible is read, it should be in red because this is the Lord Jesus talking. He said in verse 38, give and it shall be given unto you. Hallelujah. He said for you to give. And then the rest of this verse deals with the Lord Jesus Christ talking about blessing you because you gave. But to activate the one of the heaven being open in your life, you first have to give. And then he says, and it shall be given unto you a good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. But with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. So God is saying, when you give, whatever you give, I'm going to take that 
and I'm going to multiply it. The Bible says some are going to receive 30 fold. That's times 30. Some 60 fold. That's whatever you give times 60. And some 100 fold. Amen. So you do the math. You give a dollar, he said, I'm going to times that by 100. So for your dollar, he said, I'm going to give $100. So, so now you do the math. If you need a hundredfold return and you need a big blessing, you need to give so that you can ex activate that big blessing in your life. And then he says, I'm going to give it back to you a good measure. Meaning he's going to measure it out. He, whatever you gave, he's going to put a ruler on it. He's going to measure it out. And it's always bigger than what you gave. Amen. Because you can't be God giving. And then he said, I'm going to press it down. Because sometimes we have too much air in our pockets. He said, I'm going to press it down. Why? So I can get more in there. It's like the trash can. The trash can, you can get more trash in it. Now, if you just throw the bag in there and you don't press it down, you're going to get two bags inside that garbage can when really you can get four. So you got to get your big butt up there. I'm talking to myself. I don't, I don't know how big you are. I can't see you. I'm talking about myself. I have to get my big butt up there. And I have to jump I have to jump on the trash bags so I can smash them down so I can get more trash in there. Because in Oakland, they will charge you a fee if you got too much garbage in your can. If it's, if it's overflowing, they're going to charge you for it. So I have to press it down so I can get more in there. That's what God want to do to your bank account. God want to press it down so he can get more into your bank account. And then he says, running over. Running over. Oh man, that's the abundant life. That's 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 opening up the windows of heaven, pouring you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. Amen. That's running. That's called increase. Can you say increase at home? Increase. Okay, you said it. You have to be able to speak what you want God to do into an existence. When you sow a seed, you say increase. You say increase. When I'm, I'm sowing this seed by faith and I'm expecting increase to come. See, you got to speak what you need into an existence. God want to bless you. He want to pay off your bills. He wants you to be debt free. He never want his children to be broke anymore. And having a whole bunch of stuff and a lot of bills is not being blessed. That's called I'm stressed out because I got too many bills. God want to bless you with stuff. With no bills. Amen. He want to bless you with a new car. And it's paid off. He want to bless you with a house. And it's paid off. God wants you to believe for the impossible. See we believe God to get the house. But we don't believe God to pay the house off. You got to step up by faith. And declare that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to bless you. With increase. And you're going to pay your house off. And you're going to live debt free. And you'll never be broke no more. And watch this. And he said, and he said, shall men give into your bosom. But with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Now Jesus, he was at, he was at, he had a multitude of people following. He was with his disciples. And all of a sudden he realized he had maybe 5,000 or more people following him. Men, not including women and children. So that could have been about 15,000 to 20,000 people. But one of the disciples said, Lord, the people are following us and we don't have enough to feed all of them. The Lord said, well, let's feed them. And he said, well, how, it, we don't have enough money. Man, we, we only got a few little dollars and it'll take, it'll take way more money than what we have to be able to feed them all. But there's a little boy that got two fishes, two small fishes and five loaves of bread. Two little fishes and five loaves of bread. Jesus took what the little boy had and he used it as a seed. Hallelujah. He took the two little fishes and five loaves of bread. And he told the disciples, have them all sit down. Have the people sit down in sections. So they all sat down on the grass. About 15 to 20,000 people. The Bible says 5,000 men plus women and children. So that's some people having two and three kids, four, five kids, plus they wife. So it could have been over 20,000 people with two small fish and five loaves of bread. But God took, Jesus took the two fish, five loaves of bread. He gave thanks and he blessed it. And he blessed it. 
and he start feeding all of the people. And the Bible says that they ate as much as they want to. And then at the end of them eating, Jesus told the disciples, now go pick up the crumbs that's left. Go pick up the pieces that's left over. After they was done eating all they wanted to, the disciples picked up 12 baskets full of bread. Why? Because God always provides you more than enough. He fed them more than they could eat, plus they had leftovers. Hallelujah, I'm trying to tell you something. If you trust God with your finances, God will not only take care of your bills, but he'll put some money in your savings account. Hallelujah, because he wants his children to be blessed. We are going into a new year, but this is the year that you got to step out by faith and trust God. In Malachi, it says, prove me now, he will say the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows, that means multiple windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Jesus want to bless you. Jesus want to bless you. But you got to be obedient to the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as your people prepare to give this last offering for the year of 2021, we ask, Lord, that you take their seeds, that you multiply it, and times it by a hundred. In the name of Jesus. Matter of fact, in Deuteronomy, it talks about a thousandfold return. Lord, we know that you are able to multiply and bless us according to your will. Because you came into this world poor, that through your poverty, we might be made rich. Hallelujah. And I'm believing God for the impossible. We got to expect miracles to happen in 2022. You got to speak it till you see it. Hallelujah. So right now, you can give on the cash out. Go to Cash App and look for Actful Gospel Oakland. Actful Gospel Oakland on the Cash App. You can also pay your tithes and give your offerings on Givelify. Amen. On Givelify. You also can go to our website at actfulgospel.org. Actfulgospel.org. And look for the donation button. Hallelujah. We just thank God. For your participation. We thank you for blessing us and keeping us in your prayers. We thank you for supporting the church during the year 2021. We give God all the praise and all the glory. Our feeding program, we have fed at least a couple thousand people every month. Hallelujah. People in the city of Oakland will not go hungry because of our feeding program. And we only can do that with you supporting our church. So we thank God for you. Happy New Year, and we will see you definitely in 2022 if God says the same. God bless you. And remember, we love you, and there's not a thing you can do about it. Hello and welcome back to All About Community. Again, my name is uh, Robert L. Harris. I am your host and my guest is Bishop Bob Jackson at Axville Gospel Church. Bishop Jackson, tell me, why is it so important for parents to get involved as they did with the OK program to ensure that the right curriculum in the school is taught and that our children are being taught? They told me that that, that was more black people that they'd ever seen at the school board meeting uh, when we came up the other Wednesday night. 
to address the school board, which I thought was so sad because these people are making decisions for our kid, kids. They're talking about educating our kids, which our kids are not being ed educated because they already know if our kids can't read by third grade, they build a prison cell for them. That is they true. know they're headed for jail. They know they're headed for a criminal activity. And yet they would promote our kids right on through the middle school. And by the time they get to middle school, they're so far behind, they can't catch up. They're embarrassed, they drop out, and the gangs are waiting for them. The gangs teach them how to shoot all crazy, upside down, and just shooting all over the place, like we see in our city right now. And gun violence is out of control. Speaking of gun violence, let's talk about District 7. What's going on here in District 7 and in Oakland? Same thing was going on in District 7 for the past 25 years, 24 years. The same exact stuff. Dumping grounds, we got speed. They, the bus lanes now are speed racers. I mean, racers, they race their cars down international. I mean, there's no police out in District 7 at all. Why, I, why, well, why? Well, first of all, there's a shortage of police officers. They're down to 680 officers, and every month they're losing between 10. How many should there? It should be 850. Mm. To, to really protect the, and that's just to protect the citizens of Oakland. They're down to 680. And that's why we got all this criminal act behavior, all this gun violence, all the speeding and wrecks we've got. You ought to see the, the, the madness that's going on in District 6 well, and District 7. Well, I, I, I'm aware of the madness. I'm, I'm just reminded of the uh, baby who was shot on 880. Yeah, uh, two years Jasper old. Wolf. Yeah, two years old, and there's these guys having a gun battle right out of Oakland, right outside. Driving here, up and down the freeway, right. with having shooting a gun battle at each other like the Wild Wild West, shooting mm. each other, and a stray bullet hit that baby in a car seat in that car right in the head and killed that baby. Now, dead. what can be done about this violence? It's not just in Oakland, but it's all over, all over the nation, actually. Well, that's because the Black Lives Matter group started something about getting rid of the police, and the anarchists joined the Black Lives Matter, and they got in about not wanting police at all. Defund the police, take the money, we don't need police. And this is what you see when you don't have police. But, 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 but Bishop, now let me push you back on that, is, police, uh, I should say, are the police the solution to these problems? Isn't it more complex than that? It is certainly more complex than that, but in order to get a handle on it, I'm saying we need the police because innocent people are being killed. That's not the first child that's been killed by a stray bullet. We had a young man, 19 years old, at our church get killed. Same way, he's riding in the car with his friends and coming down Haven's Court, a stray bullet hit him in the head and killed him dead. He was not a part of gangs, he was in college and we grew that boy up in the church. I'm telling you, just a fine young man, but he's dead now. Just because somebody out there shooting at each other, crazy shooting, not knowing how to shoot, and killed them. So this is not the first time anybody's been killed with straight bullets. We have that a lot. 119 homicides we have right now in the city of Oakland. More than we've had in I don't know how many years. Well, uh, that's true. But what I'm trying to get at is that uh, we need some uh, real uh, revigor. Uh, uh, revitalization within our communities and part of that it just seems to me Bishop ought to involve the church and if we had more people going to church like when I was a kid I was a, I was afraid to do a lot of stuff because the Bible said thou shalt not kill but actually God with the concept of God and the knowledge of God even, even just the awareness of God causes a person to be moral I mean, you, you have moral behavior just because you have a concept of God and you know God is watching you. It but just, modern, a lot of these kids don't even have any concept that of you, God. You hit the hit nail on the head. See, the parents, old parents, our parents, drug us to church. Absolutely. I mean, we Didn't had, have a choice. We had a drug habit, but it was being <laughs> drugged drug to church, church, okay? And, that, <laughs> and, and I thank God for them. I thank God they did. Because even when I was in sin, and I was in a lot of sin, but when I passed by a church, I put my alcohol between my legs and <laughs> turned my music down, and I, I wouldn't even hit the gas. I just cruised <laughs> by the church. Because something about that cross and that church, my daddy grew us up. He was an old deacon in the Baptist church, and he grew us up. 
with a concept of God and knowing God, but we can stray it away. But see, he said, if you train up a child in the way in which he should go when he's old, he will not they won't depart. And as I got older, good God of my, <laughs> I was glad when they said unto me, let us go, go to the ahead. house. Amen. Oh, oh man, I, I mean, start, I'm ready. You know <laughs> I'm ready to start preaching now. You got that right. I'm on a, I want to <laughs> just turn to the Ten Commandments. Yes. That shall not kill. That shall not steal. Yes. Yes. We're going to have to go to break very soon oh. before I get carried away. Oh, <laughs> hey, oh, hallelujah. Uh, <clears throat> don't touch that remote. We will be right back with All About Community. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris. I am your host. And my guest is Bishop Bob Jackson, Axful Gospel Church, right here in Oakland.
Hello and welcome back to All About Community. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris and I am your host. And when we went to break, I was talking with Bishop Bob Jackson, who is pastor of Axwell Gospel Church right here in Oakland. And we were talking about the religious aspect of reducing crime. And, and I was uh, getting carried away about the Ten Commandments. And uh, I, I want to shift a little bit, but not much, and talk about District uh, 7. What is going on in District 7 and, and how can we uh, revitalize uh, District 7? Because uh, even though we got a new city council person who I believe is now running for mayor <laughs> and, uh, had, and, and, and haven't yet really begun her, 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 her cleaning up of, uh, of uh, East Oakland, District 7. Uh, Bishop, uh, can you explain uh, what should we be doing in District 7? Well, what we should be doing in District 7 is everybody who live in District 7 and District 6 ought to be just rising up complaining loud, going down to city hall, screaming and hollering at those city council people, just like the rest of the people do who don't even live in Oakland, to get them to do what we need to do in order to take care of our community and our people. We need to be up in arms instead of laying back saying, well, they're not doing anything, nothing we can do. You know what? City hall works on one principle, and What's that, that is the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And if the community is not squeaking, if the community is not up in arms, if the community is not upset about the killings, neither will the politicians be. They are only motivated by somebody down there screaming and hollering at them. The day that the community, District 6 and District 7, get together and go down to City Hall and let the mayor, let the city council people know we're not going to tolerate this madness and enough. I'm tired of people saying enough is enough. Listen, en listen. if that's the truth, <laughs> get together, let's go down to City Hall and let's do the Watusi Watch stop on those city council people's desks. They're the ones that's responsible for making sure that your community uh, Bishop, is why don't you just tell us how you really feel about well, that. It, 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 listen, I've been in Oakland for 75 years. I'm 75 years old. I've been here all of my life. Born in Berkeley, raised in Oakland. I've never seen what I see today. Trash and dirt and debris and, and folks just literally just it's almost like they hate one another. I mean, it's like a hatred. Well, that's why a lot of the killing go, uh, that's exact, going on. Uh, exactly Bishop, right. Now, there is an example that uh, you just illustrated uh, last week uh, when you were down at the school board, mobilizing the community to come out to the city council and demand. That's why I ran for city council. That's why I didn't get, I didn't get elected. One of the reasons that- That was a I, big mistake, obviously. Uh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> we was need you on the city council. Me. Now they're saying I should run for mayor. But let me tell you something. <laughs> I don't want to run for mayor. I'm, I'm, I'm the bishop over Oakland. That's what I feel like. But I've got to say what I have to say, and I've got to tell the truth. You're not going to get anything from this city hall, from this city council people, until we come together as a community and demand our rights. We pay taxes. We have a right to live in a safe facility, people stealing your catalytic converters, people breaking in your houses, people, enough, you tell talking enough is enough. No, let's come together and let's, let's raise our voices and say, no, we're not going to tolerate that. You either do something about it or we're going to call for impeachment of you right now. And your, your desires to be the mayor, you can throw that out the window because <laughs> you haven't done anything as a city councilman. Wow. That's I mean, what, that's what I would say. Oh, that, that, that's saying a lot. And I think you raised a good point when you talked about how uh, unclean the city appears to be, especially Filthy. in District uh, six, six and, and seven. seven. Filthy. And, and, and are there some other things that we can be doing uh, ourselves? Yeah, we could we could go out and clean up, you know, every time they dump and let them know this is the dump site. Just dump your stuff here. We'll clean it up and take it to the dump for you. Or we could put some stakeouts on that dump. And there when we catch go. these people dumping, we can get their license and whatnot. We can impound their trucks. We can give them a fine. They will, they will not dump in the city of Oakland. That's what I was going to do if I became city councilman. Well, why won't the city do that? Because, it just seems to be because so the, simple. Because the city is waiting for the community to tell them what to do. <laughs> you think, you really think it's, it's I that do, simple? I do, I do, I do. 
You got people that don't even live in the city telling the city what to do. Well, that's true, too. And they're obeying them. Took $18 million from the police department. We call 911, can't even get a cop. You can't pay for a cop in East Oakland. Go to 6 and 7. You can run down the street. You can go down East 14th Street 100 miles an hour. You don't see a police officer no place. And that is a tragedy. I wouldn't lie. Unfortunately, again, we're going to have to go to break. But, Bishop, you are just, I mean, I think I'm going to vote for you again, even though you may not be on the ballot. I'm, I'm just going to vote for you. I'm, I'm going to write your name in. I'm too old. To <laughs> you I'm ain't too, too old. I only, have one, I only have one opportunity. But I tell you what, I am going to tell the truth. If you don't want to know the truth, don't ask me. Well, we want to know the truth. And they say, tell the truth and the truth will set you free. We got to go to break, unfortunately. Uh... Don't touch that remote, put it down. We will be right back with All About Community again. My name is Robert L. Harris, and I am, I almost said preaching with Bishop <laughs> Robert Jackson, Axel Gospel Church. I am preaching. This feels good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Nobody like Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's so worthy. And that's why we lift him up. We tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Come on.
He's been good to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, and welcome back to All About Community. When we went to break, I actually said I was preaching. I wasn't preaching. The <laughs> bishop was preaching. <laughs> he just got me excited. Uh, bishop, uh, before we uh, conclude, uh, I'd like to ask you a few questions about... Um, the uh, Coliseum development, uh, the proposals for that, I believe there are two groups vying for that uh, right here in East Oakland, District 6, District 7. Uh, you have any ideas or thoughts on uh, the Coliseum uh, development? Yeah, I, yes, I do, uh, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, I would love to see those two groups that now have joined together and the one group that's still out there kind of like in competition with those two groups. When you said two group groups have joined together, yes, uh, you it, mean it, Dave Stewart and Elaine Dave Brown? Dave Stewart and Elaine Brown's okay. group, they've joined together. Ray Bobbitt and his group is still out. What I'm hoping and praying is that all three of them will come together and buy the whole complex. By, in other words, buy all of the property at the Coliseum. And then together, all three of them would develop the community. Uh, and and then I know it's going to be done right. And then it'll be owned by the black community, which means that we would have the say so as to what goes on. So in that we community. would, in essence, uh, have a black Wall Street. Is that we would what have you're a, saying? That is exactly right. And anybody that want to go and check on Black Wall Street in Oklahoma and what they had, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful black section that was just. Wonderful. They had black hotels. They had uh, black barbershop, barber restaurants, shops, you name you it. You name it. They and had. then something happened, right? Yeah. The white folks <laughs> burned them down. I burned the whole thing down because they didn't want to see black people prosper. They didn't want to see black people becoming independent. Now, what can you do, Bishop? Uh, as you said, I, I, I'm quoting you now, you the Bishop of Oakland. <laughs> right. Now, what can you do to bring those uh, groups together what? so that we can get a Black Wall Street here in Oakland? Well, I've talked to Ray Bobbitt and okay. I've talked to, uh, to uh, uh, Stewart, uh, and I, I haven't spoken to Elaine Brown, but I've talked to Dave Stewart, I've talked to Ray Bobbitt, and, uh, and uh, I think we may be seeing something, and I've been praying about that because I just know that that would be the answer, you know. And not, see, it's only half of the property that, that they're entertaining right now. And the other half belong to the city. Half belong to the county, half belong to the city. My thing is get a hold of both halves mm -hmm. so we have the whole thing then we can begin to develop. Now the A's, I believe, have contracted to take over the county's part of the uh, Correct. Coliseum. But the, what is the So A's the want? only thing left would be the city's part, is right. that right? But the A's don't want it because the A's really want to move down to uh, down the Howard Terminal, Term down on the West Oakland side, and the mayor is just, she's pom-pom girl for that to happen. <laughs> so the point of it is, that's gonna still leave the A's with half of the Coliseum to do what? So black people can own it. We have black people that are ready, got the money, everything to do it. And plus they have the renditions as to what it would look like when they finish building it out. It's beautiful. I'm telling you, I want to see that. It is really uh, beautiful. If you haven't seen the plans, uh, please uh, take the time to do so. I know a lot of them have been published on the internet, et cetera. Uh, but developing uh, the Coliseum area is very, very important. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Uh, our next set segment is going to uh, deal with the Oakland African American Chamber of Commerce, founded by Bishop Bob Jackson. Uh, so don't go away. Don't touch that remote. Uh, we will be back, but before we do, let me again say, uh, Bishop Jackson, how much we've enjoyed having you, and we want you to come back uh, on a monthly basis, if <laughs> necessary, so that you can preach and inspire us. Thank you, sir. I'd to love do to, the right thing. I love to. I always enjoy coming to your program. And I thank you it. again. Uh, my name is Robert L. Harris, and I am your host. And thank you, Bishop Jackson, for being with us. Thanks for Gospel Church. Thank you for having me.
St. John chapter 14, I want to pick it up at verse 1. He says, let not your heart be troubled. And that's a word for somebody today. In other words, quit tripping on whatever it is that's going on in your life. Quit being distressed. Quit being, amen, depressed. Quit losing sleep. Quit, 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 quit being troubled, amen, by whatever's going on in your life. And he says, this is the reason why. He says, you believe in God? He says, believe also in me. So then the Lord begins to give, amen, a, a, a discourse, I think, that's so powerful. He said, in my father's house, and Elder Cotton was talking about those mansions, amen, in God's house. I don't know how you fit a mansion inside of a house, but in God's house, the father's house, he says, are many mansions, amen, many dwelling places. And he says, if, I, if it were not so, he said, I would have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. So to answer Simon Peter's question about where you're going, he said, I'm going to my father's house to prepare some places for you. Amen. And I want you to know, amen, God has prepared, the Lord Jesus has prepared, 
places for us. Amen. He's not talking about now in this life. He's talking about after we leave here. So don't let the devil make you think that this is the final frontier. Amen. Because there is a life after this life and it's more better than this life that we've been living. And it's a place that we're going to. It's called heaven. Are you with me, somebody? And verse 3, he said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, he said, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So the Lord Jesus is comforting them by telling them, listen, you're going to be with me. You're going to rejoin me. Amen. At that time, you're going to come. We're going to come back together. You'll see me. We'll be together. Amen. And we'll be together through eternity. Amen. He said, and whether I go, ye know. In other words, where I'm going, he says, you know, and the way you know, you know. Watch verse 5. Thomas, I love him. He's a member of Acts. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Now, this is, this is a dynamic statement. The Lord Jesus said unto him, I am the way. No, you missed that. You missed that. You missed that. He didn't say, I am a way. He didn't say, I am the one that can show you the way. He didn't say, I am the one that can give you a map, amen, so you'll know, amen, which way to go. He says something so profound. The Lord Jesus says, I am the way. And so the question would be, what way are you looking for? And many people right now are confused. They're lost, amen. They're walking around. I, I saw a question the other day on the billboard that said, who am I? People are asking the question, who am I? They don't even know who they are, amen. And so the Lord Jesus says, you looking for the way? You're looking for the way for prosperity. You're looking for the way to be blessed. You're looking for the way, amen, to have God's blessings on your life. The Lord Jesus said, look no further. He said, I am the way. Did you see that? Not a way. He said, I am the way. Many people say, and I've heard them say, they said, well, you know, there's many ways to get to God. Yeah. Well, the Lord Jesus said, not so. He said, I am the way. Watch this now. He said, I am the way. Who's the way? He said, and not only am I the way, he said, watch this, but I am the truth. You can put I am on each one of these. He says, I am the way. And then he says, I am what? The truth. And then he says, I am what? The life. So the life that you're looking for, the truth that you're looking for, the way that you're looking for, the Lord Jesus say, I am. I am the one you're looking for. So the truth, the way, the life is in a person, in our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you with me, somebody? I know the devil hate to hear that, but you know what? It's true anyhow. Are you with me, somebody? And all of you that's experienced him, amen, and experienced a brand new life in Christ Jesus, you know it to be true as well, amen? I want you to know, amen, praise the Lord. I thought I was living until I got saved. I said, I thought I was living until I got saved. Come on, I was doing everything everybody else was doing. But I want you to know, I found out when I got saved, there was a better life than the one I had been living in the name of Jesus, amen. And the Lord will give you a brand new life. Once you receive him into your heart as Lord and Savior, he will give you a brand new way, a brand new truth, and a brand new life. Are you with me, somebody? All things are passed away, and all things will become new in your life. I make you a promise that's what happens, because that's what the word says it would, and it did for me. So the life, he says, and then he says something arresting. He said, no man. How many? He said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, the Lord Jesus is the only one, amen, that I see through the Bible who constantly referred to God Almighty as his Father. Did you see that? He constantly referred to God, Almighty God, the Mighty God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He, he frequently referred to him as Father. And so he says, now I want you to get this because today is Father's Day. He said, no man, how many? No man cometh unto the Father, he says, but by me. So when you hear people say, well, there's many ways, you know, to get to God. There's many ways to go to heaven. I want you to know that's a lie. There's only one way to get to the Father. There's only one way to get to heaven, and it's through our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. It's through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we have the answer for the world, saints of God. And that's why we go out witnessing, and we're going to do more and more and more and more. We're going to take this city for the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that all right? 
The, the shootings are already going down. The murders are already going down. I was talking to the police the other day. They said, Bishop, the crime is going down in the city of Oakland. I said, I know. We've been having these prayer vigils every month for the past four months, actually getting ready to have another one, and we're going to keep praying until the murders are disappearing in the city of Oakland in the name of Jesus, and those young men are going to get, I would have had somebody who believed God with me this morning. Those young men are going to get saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Let me calm down. So the Lord says, he says, no man, underline that, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So I don't care what religion is going on and what they say about the religion and all of this or who they say the people are in the religion and all of that. There's only one religion, amen, as far as that goes, and that's the Christian religion. Are you with me, somebody? And there's only one way to get to God the Father, and that's through our Lord Jesus Christ. You got to know him to know the Father and when you know the Father, you'll know him, and he'll know you, and you'll know him, and he'll know you, and you'll know him, and he'll know you. So watch this now. Watch this now. In the next verse, he really tears them up. He says, if you had known me. Look at that word, if. That's one of the biggest words in the Bible. He said, if you had known me. What are you saying, Lord? He said, if you had really known who I am, the Lord Jesus, if you had really known me, he said, you should have known my father also. Yes. Well, if we know you, how could we know the father? Watch this. And from henceforth, in other words, from now on, he says, you know him. You know the father. Watch this. And you have seen him. Now, I know they were baffled now because they've never heard any kind of teaching like this before. And you never hear this taught, by the way, in the churches today. He said, if you had known me, in verse 7, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth, from now on, you know him and have seen him. I'm sure they were looking all around and said, where, where? So Philip is an Acts member, eight, verse 8. He said, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices, suffices us. In other words, we'll be satisfied. Show us the Father, and we'll be satisfied, Lord. Now watch verse 9. Jesus said unto him, have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? What? You, you're a man just like us. You, you're not God, are you? He said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And how can you ask the question, show me the Father? And how could that be? Well, if you put your finger right there and slide over to John chapter 4, verse 24, I hope I can help bring it to you a little bit clear. St. John chapter 4 and verse 24. Turn over there with me just a moment. The woman at the well was inquisitive about God, amen, and about how to get to God and about how to serve God. And the Jews and the Samaritans was at odds at that time. Watch this. And so <laughs> the question came up about God, amen, and the Lord Jesus simply told her that, watch verse 24, Amen. John chapter 4, verse 24. The, the Lord Jesus said, amen, to the woman at the well. He said, read it, somebody. God is a what? God is a spirit. God is not a man. He is a what? A spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Did you see that? So Jesus, our Lord, once again, identifies who God really is. He says, God is a spirit. Now, if you just hold on to that thought and go back to the text now, he says, watch this now again, go to, go, to, go to nine. He said, have I been so long time with you? Yet has thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Can you see a spirit? Can you see a spirit? No. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Well, he's saying, in essence, the Father is inside of me. And I'm inside of him. He's in me. Amen. Now watch this. He's going to bring it to you. Verse 10. He says, believest thou not that I am in the father and the father in me? Well, how is the father in you, Lord Jesus? His spirit is in me. The spirit of God, who is a spirit, is living in me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he said, believest thou not that I am in the father and the father in me? Watch this. Then he says, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Hallelujah to God. 
So the Lord Jesus is saying, you see the works that I'm doing? You see the words that I'm speaking? These are not my works. These are not my words. I'm speaking the words and doing the works of my Father because my Father is in me doing it all in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Man, that was worth an amen right there from somebody. I just can't see it. That's all right. Keep looking. Keep looking. Look at verse 11. He said, watch this. He said, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else, watch this, he said, if you can't believe me for what I'm saying, and you can't believe that God the Father is in me, he says, believe me for the very work's sake. What works was he talking about? He said, well, I raised Lazarus from the grave, amen, when he was graveyard dead. Blind man, the blind man, Bartimaeus, received his sight. The one that was dumb and deaf began to hear and speak. He said, I, I raised a little girl up, Jairus' daughter, from the dead. There was a woman with an issue of blood, amen. I healed her when the doctors couldn't heal her. I did all kind of miracles and all. I turned the water into wine. I walked on water with a guy named Peter. I walked on the water and I, I did all kind of... I took two, five little loaves and two little loaves of bread and I fed over 5,000 people with two little loaves and five loaves of bread, two, five loaves of bread and two little fish. He said, I fed 5,000 people. Then I turned around again and took the fishes and loaves and fed another 4,000 people with it. He said, when you see what I'm doing, he said, can't you see God moving on the face of the earth? Can't you see God doing miracles that have never been done by any man ever lived in the world today? He said, if you can't believe who I am when I say I, who I am, he said, believe me for the works that I do. Show me any man that's raising the dead. Show me any man that's healing the sick. Show me any man that's casting out devils. Show me any man that's doing what I'm doing. Hallelujah to God. If you can't believe who I am, believe me for the works that I'm doing. And look at the works that he's still doing today. Look at all you sitting up in the church today, giving God the praise and giving him the glory because he worked the work in your life and he's still working the work in your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. That's why you can say happy Father's Day. Let me calm down. He said, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Check out my work. And I want you to know that's a good thing. When you talk to people about God and whatnot, you, you need to look around for the evidence. You need to look around and see if they have any evidence to prove what they're talking about. The Lord Jesus said, check out my, check out my menu. Check out, check out, amen, my resume. Check out what I've done. Check out what, when the storms were raging, he said, I just stepped out on the starboard brow of that boat and I commanded the waves and the seas to lay down and they did obey me. Just who do you think I am? He said, I couldn't do that if I was just a man, but I'm God among you in the name of Jesus. Why they called him Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Oh, hallelujah. And so when you receive him into your heart as Lord and Savior, listen, he comes in and God the Father comes in with him in the name of Jesus. That's why he says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So stand up, amen, and let people know that God is my Father in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Quit being scared and quit running like a rabbit and quit having done all the stand. Oh, scared... Christian folks, scared of the COVID, scared of the vaccine, scared of, amen, scared to come outside, scared to go inside, scared, just scared. Listen, God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind in the name of Jesus. So you got to act on it, amen. You got to stand on it and you got to speak it in the name of Jesus. He said, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else believe me for the very work's sake. Watch verse 12. Here he comes. He said, barely, barely, or truly, truly, I say unto you. Who's he talking to? He said, barely, barely, I say unto you. Who's he talking to? He that believeth on me, watch this, the works that I do, shall he do all. Uh oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What did he say? Lord, we can't do what you did. He said you could. But look at the qualifier. Look at the qualifier he puts there. Barely, barely, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. What does that mean? He that's believing in me, he that's really believing who I am, he that really believes that I am the son of God, hallelujah, he that really believes that I came down from heaven to seek and to save that which was lost, he that can really believe on me, he said, the works that I do, 
shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father. He wasn't talking about quality. He was talking about quantity. He's saying you'll do more because I've got an appointment to go home to be with my father, but you're going to be here for a long time. You can do all more, more work than what I've done. You can cast out devils. You can lay hands on the sick. You can, you can pray for people and get them into the kingdom of God. You can help people get born again and get saved. But you can't be selfish because that's the worst fish in the sea. Anybody ever had a bite of selfish? Verse 13, got to be a fisherman to know that one. Verse 13, watch what he says. And whatsoever you shall ask, watch this. Now here's carte blanche, here's MasterCard. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That, watch this, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. What did he just say? He's saying whatever you're asking God for. Whatever you're asking when you pray, you're asking God for. He says, ask whatever you're asking for to God, but then ask it in my name, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to God. He said, and when you ask it in my name, amen, he says, then, he said, it shall be done. Watch this. Then will I do it. That will I do. Watch this. And the reason I'm going to do it is that my father may be glorified in the son. Hallelujah to God. In other words, the connection, the relationship between father and son will be so known that when you pray to the father in Jesus name, hallelujah to God. He says, I know God hears you and God is in a hurry to answer your prayer. He said, and watch this 14. I love it. He said, if you shall ask anything. Now, 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 wait a minute. I, I know some carnal folks are going to say, anything? I, 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 I'm going to ask for a man, and I'm going to ask for some, some money. I'm going to ask for a house. I'm, no, 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 no. See, if you're really in God, if you're really in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're really in the Word of God and He's really in you, you're going to ask according to His Word. Amen. You're going to ask according to His will. Amen. And when you ask according to your, His will, then you know that He hears you. And the cause that He hears you, He's going to give you those things that you desire of Him. But there'll be things that God already promised you. He's promised you life and life more abundantly. How many of you are living the abundant life? Oh, God, not even half of you. Bless your hearts today. So in verse 15, and I'm going, he says, if you love me, and I love that. If you love me. Yeah, I love the Lord. Well, do you witness? Well, well, you witness about that chocolate cake you was eating yesterday. You're witnessing how good that DoorDash that they brought you yesterday from the barbecue pit. You witnessing how good that can, if you can witness, li listen, if you can witness about those things, amen, that you find pleasure in, can't you witness about the Lord Jesus Christ and tell people that he's so good they, and let them know he woke me up this morning and gave me a mind to praise him and to serve him. I give him, you know what, if it wasn't for the grace of God, some of us wouldn't, wouldn't even wake up in the morning, but thanks be to God, he wakes us up every morning, gives us a brand new day. Somebody ought to give him the glory and give him the praise. And folks, Christians have the nerve to get up in the morning and say, oh, another day. Yeah, I got to go to work this morning. You, you ought to think, you know what? It's so many jobs looking for people to go to work. COVID messed some people up and the government. They say, you know what? I'm living pretty good and I haven't worked all year. Bills are paid. Baby got shoes. I don't think I'm going to go back to work. <laughs> Everywhere I look, it's a hiring, hiring for hire, hire, begging people to come to work. Jobs everywhere. And people are saying, no, nah, thank you. No, thank you for the job. No, thank you. People are going out of business. Businesses are going out of business, not because of their products, but because they can't find people to work for them. Oh, you think I'm going to work for $15 an hour? I can, man, get out of my back and live better like I'm living. Thank you, Biden. Give me some more of that money. And I tell you another thing, women are finding out that it wasn't a bad thing to be a housewife. 
It wasn't a bad thing to run your house and whatnot. And not only that, it wasn't a bad thing to supervise your children and to be over your children and to know where they're at and to know what's going on. COVID did some blessings in the community, saints of God, because women are taking care of their homes. They're taking care of their children and they're taking care of business, amen, in their homes. I believe that was God's order in the first place. I don't believe God intended for women to go out to the marketplace to work. That's what the man was for. Are you with me, somebody? The man was supposed to go work. Amen. He bring home the bacon and the wife. Is, well, I don't say bacon. He bring home the, the turkey and the wife is the one that baked the turkey. Are you with me, somebody? That's for you that don't eat. There ain't no bacon around some of y'all. So he said, if you ask anything in my name according to his will, he said, watch this. He said, I will do it. Now, saints of God, what a deal is that? What kind of deal is that? Are you with me, somebody? Now, watch this. Now, watch this. Watch this. He said, if you love me, and I want to focus right there. Do you really love the Lord? Do you love him as good as you love Fido? Do you love him as well as you love Meow Mix? Do you love him as well as you love, amen, your car, your... Amen. He said, then if you really love me, this is the Lord Jesus talking. He said, keep my commandments. What are your commandments, Lord Jesus, that you should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Watch this. And love thy neighbor as you love yourself. You know how many people in the world today don't love themselves? That's why they're trying to change themselves. They don't like the way they look. They don't like the way they are. They don't like being a woman. They want to be a man. They don't like being a man. They want to be a woman. They don't, they just don't like, they just, they don't like the way they, they don't like themselves. But when you really love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, then God allows you and blesses you to, for the first time in your life to really love yourself. That way, when you get ready to eat that double portion, that, that second helping of that food, amen, you look at it and say, no, I can't deal with that because uh, my temple, my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and I'm not going to be getting no diabetes and no, and no sugar diabetes and all. I'm not getting no sicknesses and disease. I'm not eating that. I feel a tomato spirit coming. Because you love yourself, you take better care of yourself. I'm going to drink my water. I'm going to eat my vegetables. I'm going to make sure that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and that I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You, in order to do that, you got to take care of your body. But you got to love yourself to do that. I love God made me a man. I would have made me a little taller. I thank God for platforms. Amen. When the platforms came out, I had me some six inch platform, boy. I was six feet tall walking around. I wish they'd bring them back. So watch what he said. Now come on back with me. Come on back with me. Pick it back up at 15. I want to get that. If you love me, the Lord Jesus said. How many really love the Lord Jesus? How many really love him because of all he's done for you? How many really love him because he gave you a second chance on life? How many really love him because he healed your body, delivered your soul, gave you a job, took care of you, amen, when nobody would help you, the Lord helped you? He said, then keep my commandments. He just gave us two. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love thy neighbor and love thy neighbor. Why do you think we go out here knocking on the doors? Because we don't have nothing else to do and we're just stupid. We go out here knocking on the doors because we love these people that are not saved because it wasn't that long ago. We were the people that were out there that weren't saved. And now that we saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, we got to go back and try to get more people saved because this is the life that they're missing that God wants every one of them to have. That's why we go. Watch this. 16. He said, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Stop right there. Woo! Anybody remember the old days when you didn't have electric blankets? Remember the old days when you didn't even have electric? When wintertime come, mama had something up on the shelf called a comforter. 
Hallelujah. They get cold. She bring out that it was a quilt. Amen. It was all quilted up. A patch quilt. Had all kind of different patches and, and things on it. You, you'd be looking at it. It looked pretty rough. But boy, when you got up under it. Hallelujah to God. You were like toast when you got up under that bad boy. It kept you warm in the winter. Are you with me, somebody? It was called a comfort. Well, God's got a comfort for you. He's got a comfort that's going to keep you comforted. Amen. And that word comfort actually means paraclete, which means somebody that's going to walk along alongside you amen to help you do what God has told you to be able to do how many know you got a comforter in the Lord Jesus watch this and the comfort that word paraclete also means counselor I would you had a pencil so you can write this down it's not just comforter but the word paraclete actually means comforter it means counselor it means helper it means intercessor. What is the intercessor? Intercessor means when I don't know how to pray, when I don't feel like praying, when I'm, when I'm so overwhelmed with what I'm going through. He said the comforter will pray for me and he'll pray prayers that I can't pray for myself. Hallelujah. He'll pray to the Father for me. Amen on my behalf because he's an intercessor. And then he's an advocate. What does that mean? It means he's an attorney. He'll plead my case. Are you with me, somebody? He will plead my case. I don't care how bad it looks, amen, and how bad it looks, amen, against me. He will be my lawyer that will get me out of whatever I get in. I see, I see those Barnes people and I see other people advertising about their insurance and, and how the lawyers and how they can get you out. But I tell you, I know a lawyer, amen, that can get you out of your situation in the name of Jesus, amen. He's called the Holy Ghost, the, a.k.a. the Comforter, amen. And then the Bible says he's a strengthener. That's what a paraclete is as well. He'll strengthen you. Amen. When you're feeling weak, he'll reach down and lift you up. Amen. And give you strength. And then the Bible says he's a standby. In other words, he'll stand by you when everybody leave you. The Holy Ghost will still be standing there. And you'll know greater is he that is with you than he that is all the people that's against you. In the name of Jesus. I'd love to talk more about the Holy Ghost. The comforter. Amen. But then when you go to verse 17, look at this. He said, the comforter, and he tells you who he is. He said, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. No, you can't see him because he's a spirit. He said, the world can't see him because he's a spirit. And none of that, because he's holy. And if you're not holy, he, you sure can't see him. He said, neither knoweth him. He said, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be what? And shall be. That's where you want the Spirit of God to be inside of you, saints of God. When the Spirit of God comes inside of you, he does some powerful things in your life. Now I said, what kind of powerful things did he do in my life, Brother Bob? Well, go to Romans chapter 8. Are you with me this morning? You don't mind me teaching a little bit, do you? Romans chapter 8, amen. Come on. Somebody said, I don't know all about this. Hey, sanctify, feel with the Holy Ghost. What is all that about? Well, good. I'm glad you asked me. I'm going to show you if I can in the Word of God. Go to the 8th chapter of the book of Romans. Amen. 8th chapter of Romans. Pick it up at the 14th verse for time's sake. Watch this. Watch this now. When you have it, say amen. amen. Romans 8, 4. If you don't have your Bible, get a pencil paper. Just write it down so you can read it later. Is that all right? 8th chapter of Romans, verse 14. And thanks, Storm, amen. I had to move some scriptures around this morning. And I thank you, uh, Storm, our video man, amen. He's putting those scriptures on the screen for you. He said, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, I wish you were close enough to the one next to you to turn to him and say, who's leading you? Because nowadays, folks is leading people, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And, and listen, they, they can't lead themselves, and they're trying to lead you. I saw a bumper sticker one time say, don't follow me, I'm lost. <laughs> we ought to bring that bumper sticker back because a whole lot of folks are getting people to follow them, and they're just as lost as they can be. The blind leading the blind, the Bible said they both are falling to the ditch. But he said, for as many as are led by the Spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit. We just talked about the comforter. Amen. The comforter of God. He said, the Spirit of God. There's only one Spirit that comes from God. Don't let people fool you. 
A lot of people sitting around with that spooky stuff and got the black light on and they got the and they got the crystal ball and stuff and they tell me, oh, this is God. This is the power of God. Amen. I see you. I see you coming. Oh, something happened to you. Look like you. Yeah. Listen, those folks, all the folks, they work for the devil. Are you with me, somebody? And don't and, and you go all that's tripping on that horoscope. Amen. Just look at the word horror. You don't want no horoscoping in your life, amen. You don't want no horror. I'm a Gemini with a Capricorn. You a liar. That's all you are. You a liar. You might, you might be a Gemini, amen. You might be two of you operating, but it ain't two. For, let me leave it alone. For, for as many, watch this now. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Got to ask the question. Is God leading you? Is God leading you to marry that man? Is God leading you to buy that house there? Is God leading you to leave the church? Is it God leading you to join the church? Is it God leading you to pay your tithe and give you up? Is it God leading? Is the Spirit of God leading you? He said, but they that are led by the Spirit of God are the, watch this now, are the sons of God. If you're a son and if you're a daughter, it means that God is your father. So the Holy Spirit then is the one who brings you into the body of Christ Amen. And God becomes your father. Did you see that? Okay, stay with me. Watch this. Verse 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage. So why are you still in bondage? Folks are talking about Juneteenth. We got freed 150 years ago and still in bondage. 150 years ago and still in bondage. Hello, somebody. We're going to celebrate. Made a holiday out of Juneteenth. Forget the holiday. Give us the freedom. Are you with me, somebody? And people are looking for people to give you the freedom when God's already given you the freedom. Now stand up and act like you're free in the name of Jesus and do what you need to do in Jesus' name. Quit worrying about what somebody say about you. Praise the Lord, saints of God. Praise the Lord. Listen, listen. The last day of 2021, and we are celebrating, amen, the fact that 2021 is gone. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm happy about 2021 being gone. Amen. With all of the things we had to go through in 2021, I want you to know, I don't know about you, but I am thankful to God that it's over. Amen. And now we're looking forward to a brand new year, 2022. I believe God, it's going to be the best year of our lives in the name of Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah, for we are the children of God, saints of God. And I believe God, he's going to bless us immensely in 2022. I like to say it like this. He's going to bless you in 2022. Amen. That's because we're going to do three things, saints of God. And I believe that's going to be our mantra. Amen. For 2022. And that is we're going to live holy. That's number one. And living holy just means that we do everything in our power to stay away from sin. That's what I'm saying. The Bible says if we do sin, quickly we should confess our sins. And the Bible says God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if you do sin, and we have a tendency to sin, don't try to act like we're super saints. We have a tendency to sin. And what is sin? When we know to do good and don't do it, that's what sin really is. And so we are, we're gonna prone to do some sinning. But the deal is we don't stay in sin. And it doesn't stop us from being sons and daughters if we do slip into sin. But God wants us to be huh, faithful to just confess that sin, ask the Lord Jesus to forgive us for that sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Matter of fact, that'd be a great thing for somebody to do right now that's viewing, amen, you need to check yourself. The Bible says let a man, let a woman examine themselves to see if you're in the faith. Sin, I'm telling you, is something that God hates. He hates sin, amen, and so as a consequence of hating sin, God has provided the best cleanser for sin that we ever could have. That's the blood of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, the blood of Jesus is better than, is better than comet. The blood of Jesus is better than Tide. The blood of Jesus is better than any Clorox bleach. Let me tell you something. Old folks used to sing a song, what could wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Praise God. And saints of God right now, I wouldn't want to start 2022 
with those sins in my life that I had in 2021. Right now, God has given you an opportunity to start with a brand new slate. Amen. Start a brand new life. Yet they both see. In 2022, you have an opportunity to start brand new. How does that sound? I don't know about you, but it sounds great to me. So right now, if you just stop for a moment, whatever you're doing, amen, and humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. And once again, the Lord says, let a man, let a woman examine themselves. I'm not trying to examine you because I don't know. But my point is, you can examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. And what he's saying is examine yourself to see if there's any sin in your life. We do not want to go into the new year 2022 with sin in our lives. And right now we have an opportunity to confess that sin. Come on, let's do it right now. All you got to do is say this little prayer. Lord Jesus, come on. Lord Jesus, forgive me for all of my sin. I believe you died on the cross and you were buried. And on the third day, God the Father raised you from the dead. And right now, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart and I receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. I know if you prayed that prayer right now, if you've repented of your sins, listen, you are restored as a child of God. You are in the family of Almighty God in the name of Jesus. And I want to let you know that we love you. Amen. God loves you. And the heavens are rejoicing over you right now. Amen. And so now that we've got that together, 2022, we're looking forward to doing something. Amen. That I think is going to be a real blessing for all of you. And that's three things. Amen. The first thing is we just dealt with some of it. We're going to live holy. Come on, make it up in your mind right now. Listen, 2022, I'm going to live holy. Say it again. 2022, I am going to live holy. Number two, 2022, I'm going to love the Lord my God with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. And I'm going to love my neighbor as I love myself. So 2022, we're going to walk in love. We're going to love everybody. We're going to love God. We're going to love our brothers and sisters. We're going to love our family. Listen, we're going to love so much, we're going to love our enemies. Amen, in the name of Jesus. And we're going to, listen, we're going to love ourselves. Amen. When we love everybody, the Bible says we even will be able to love ourselves. It's about time you and yourself get together. You know that? And 2022 is a perfect time for you to love yourself. Yeah. No matter what you've been, no matter what you've gone through, no matter what you've done, you right now, because of the blood of Jesus cleansing you from all of your sins, you are able to love yourself. Glory be to God. So you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and you love your neighbor as you love yourself. And God said, when you do those two commandments, you fulfill all the Ten Commandments that Moses gave the children of Israel. We fulfill those Ten Commandments by just keeping those two. So we walk, we're going to live holy and we're going to walk in love. That's number two. And number three, we're going to win all the souls we can to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I said. We're going to win all the souls we can to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to start with our family. I've been praying for my family and they're starting to come into the body of Christ. They're starting to come into the kingdom of God. They're starting to come in, amen, under the blood of Jesus. They're coming in. Listen, and I apply the blood to every one of their lives, amen, and I know that God is saving them. They're going to be saved, and I'm believing this year is going to be a mighty year of my family getting saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Let me ask you a question. What about your family? Do you want to see your family go to hell? Do you want to see your family suffer in sin for the rest to all eternity? No, the devil is a liar. You want to see your family go to heaven just like you. Well, you got to pray for them and you got to believe God for them. You got to lift them up in prayer. Listen and believe God as you apply the blood of Jesus to their lives. Believe God he's going to save them. Listen, if he did it for us, I know he'll do it for them. I will not want to see any of your family members go to hell, neither my family members or anybody's family member for that matter. We need to make sure that our families go to heaven. And then all of our friends, and then we'll spread the net even further. All of our acquaintances, 
people that we work with, people that we meet in the street, people that we meet in the malls, people that we meet, amen, walking wherever we are. We will be able to win them to the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, and our focus will be to live holy, walk in love, and win all the souls we can to the Lord Jesus Christ. Saints of God, I believe if you do that, you'll never be broke, you'll never be destitute. God will bless you coming in, coming out, all the blessings of Abraham will be on your life in the name of Jesus. And 2022 will be the best year of your life. I believe God. Amen. I believe God for it right now. So January 3rd now, remember January 3rd, we're going on a fast. We're going to be fasting and praying. Amen. And we're going to be doing something different with our prayers. We're going to be praying in the Holy Ghost. That's what I said. We're going to be praying in our heavenly language. Now, we've never been on a fast like this before. We're going to fast and pray in our heavenly language. We're going to just continue to pray in our heavenly language. Listen, the Holy Ghost can pray in us and through us, amen, without stopping, amen. So we're going to make our primary focus on praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues, and then we're going to pray, amen, for the church. We're going to pray for the families of the church, we're going to pray, amen, for the youth of the church, for our young people, in the name of Jesus, that 2020 you, 2022, hallelujah, is going to be a blessing for you in the name of Jesus. I love that sound. And I want to thank God for that. So starting January 3rd, from the time you go to bed, January 2nd, the time you go to bed to the time you wake up on January 3rd, you'll be on the fast until 6 p.m. Now, some people have already let me know. I know. Don't you touch that dial. Don't you change this channel. Let me tell you something. I know many of you won't be able to go to 6 o'clock. I realize that. But you should do the best you can. Let that be your goal. And if you come short of it, come on. At least you're trying and you're really moving. You have to get control of your flesh. I found out we don't need as much food as we've been eating Amen. And we will survive just fine with one meal a day. So after six, you can eat. Amen. And you can relax and you can. Amen. And by the time you go to bed, amen, you'll sleep good. You'll have wonderful sleep. And then when you wake up in the morning, you're back on the fast again until 6 p.m. Or whatever time you're able to hold out with the fast. You're going to be tempted. Folks are going to want to buy you lunch. Folks are going to bring you sandwiches. Folks are going to do everything to try to get you to eat. But you know when you see it, you say, no, I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to believe God because fasting does something for all of us. First of all, it strengthens us spiritually. We become stronger in the Lord fasting and praying. Not only that, but we put our flesh under subjection. And for the first time, we're able to get the victory over our flesh. We tell our flesh, no, we're not going to do that. No, you're not going to get me to do that. So Satan plays with our flesh and our five senses. Satan will do everything he can to try to get you to break the fast. Stay strong in the Lord. Ask the Lord to give you strength to go through the fast because he's going to strengthen you spiritually like never before in Jesus' name. Did you see that? And also February, the month of February, if the Lord delay is coming and we live, February the 5th, we're going to be going out witnessing. We are going to change witnessing from third Saturday to first Saturday and third Saturday. That's what I said. February 1st and February, the, the, I mean the first Saturday in February and the third Saturday in February, we'll be going out to the streets. We'll be knocking on those doors, sharing the Lord Jesus with all of the, the people, the residents, the people who live in the city of Oakland. We're going to start from seminary and go work our way all the way to the San Leandro border. We're going to start from the hills and all the way down to the ocean. We're going to win knock on every door and win every household we can to the Lord Jesus Christ. These shooters that are doing the murdering in our city and are shooting up people in our city right now, they're living somewhere in our city. We're going to smoke them out. We're going to smoke them out by going door to door, knocking on those doors and get all those families saved. And when those shooters get ready to come back in to sleep and eat, when they come in, they're going to notice a difference when they walk in that house. The power of God's going to be in that house. The family's going to be changed. They've received the Lord Jesus and they're going to share him with them. And I'm believing God that the shooters are going to start getting put down their guns and pick up their Bibles in the name of Jesus and join us 
amen, with winning souls to our Lord Jesus Christ. That's my prayer for 2022. And I pray that you can agree with me on that. Well, I just want to tell you that I'm glad 2021 is gone. I'm sure you are. I pray to God that you are. And 2022 is coming. I'm calling it the year of our Lord. It is the year of our Lord, 2022. So we'll say the year of our Lord, 2022, because that's exactly what it's going to be this time in Jesus' name. I'm thanking God, amen, for a brand new year and a brand new opportunity to do the will of God. And I love it, amen, to understand that it's not my will, but God's will being done in our lives. Saints of God, I'm encouraged, I'm happy, and I'm praying that you are. And before we go, amen, before I go uh, from being with you right now, I just want you to bow your heads with me. I want to pray with you. I just want to pray the blessings of God upon you and upon your family, upon your little old child, upon your life. Amen. That God today would touch you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, that he would quicken you with might by his spirit in the inner man in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And that the power of God would move upon you right now. Right now. Hey, right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And that God would bless you like never before in 2022. I love you. Lady Barbara love you. And remember this, there's nothing you can do about it. I look forward to fellowshipping in 2022. Amen. Get ready. We're going to have a glorious year in Jesus name. See you soon. Praise the Lord. Saints, did you enjoy the service tonight? We had a wonderful time in the Lord. God is so good. Did Bishop Bob really preach that word? He brought it on. The choir sang. What a wonderful, glorious time we have had tonight. We just thank God for modern technology that we can reach out to you from wherever we are and, from where, and wherever you are. Such a great connection. We're thankful for all that God is doing and all that he's done. Man, and Bishop brought the word. We are so happy. And here at Axel Gospel Church, we want you to know that you're always welcome. Welcome to come on and join us. Welcome to come on and be a part of our family. We love you here. We'll be with you. You have a whole family. So we thank God for tonight. We thank God for what he's doing, getting us ready for 2022. We are unstoppable. Unstoppable, saints. Man, with that word going forth, like Bishop is preaching, the choirs is singing, God is being glorified in this house. So we thank you and we praise you. And we know right now, some of you may not be in a good place. You may not really understand everything. You want to do better. So right now, God has the plan for your life. We are going to do the sinner's prayer. And it's an easy prayer that you will just repeat after me. And when we finish this prayer, I guarantee you, you're going to feel the relief. You're going to feel the relief because God is going to release all of that stuff off of you. That anxiety, that sin, those things that try to drag you down because God has a plan, a special plan for your life. Give him a hand praise. Let's clap it up wherever you are. Just stop what you're doing and let's clap it up for the Lord Jesus because God is good and his eyes and his ears are open unto us. We serve a mighty, mighty God. Oh God, we are so thankful for this day. We're so thankful. God is so worthy. We got a whole new year coming up. Come on, we excited about what God's getting ready to do. We making changes. We making our New Year's resolutions. We not only are we going to lose weight, but we standing strong because we starting our new year with a fast. That's right. 21 day fast, 6 to 6. We intend to get it right. We not playing around. We going to get it right. We going to be in good shape. We going to our mindset, our body all going to be on the right accord because we getting it done in Jesus name. Oh God. Now wait, wait, wait. Look, look. Oh, oh, look at the clock. It's almost time. We got to get ready for the countdown. Come on with me, with me. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one. Woo! Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Saints. Happy New Year, all of you that are watching. Happy New Year. Give somebody a hug. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What a wonderful year we're getting ready to have. Thank you, Lord. Happy New Year. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory.